أعزائي طلبة المرحلة الأولى السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته اليوم راح نأخذ أول محاضرة من محاضرات الأبر لمب أول محاضرة راح تكون عن الشولدر ريجن هي منطقة الكتف first of all بداية يجب أن نعرف skeleton of the upper limb يعني الهيكل العظمي للأطراف العليا skeleton of the upper limb consists of the clavicle scapula the humerus radius ulna and the bones of the hand that consist from the carpal bone metacarpal bone and the phalanges so this is the skeleton of the upper limb in our lecture today in the shoulder region the منطقة الكتف or we can call it uh, another name is the pectoral region we are concerned with this bone that is called the shoulder girdle اللي هو حزام الكتف shoulder or pectoral girdle this shoulder girdle consists from two bones the clavicle اللي هو عظم الترقوة or another name is the collar bone and the scapula or the shoulder blade اللي هو عظم لوح الكتف scapula or the shoulder blade this is a triangular bone triangular bone have two surfaces anterior or costal surface and posterior or dorsal surface it have three borders it have superior border it have medial or vertebral border and it have lateral border the posterior surface or the dorsal surface is divided by the presence of the spine of the scapula into two upper part and lower part the upper part is called supraspinous or supraspinous fossa and the lower part is called infraspinous fossa it have three bony projection the anterior one is called coracoid process the another one is called the acromion and it have a posterior bony projection that is called spine of the scapula this is the spine of the scapula that divides the dorsal surface into supraspinous and infraspinous fossae the spine of the scapula it will continue laterally as the acromion the clavicle this bone extend horizontally it have a medial or sternal end that articulate with the sternum and it have a flat lateral end that articulate with the acromion lateral end or the acromial end the humerus here we will study the proximal and the قريب and the proximal end of the humerus this is the proximal end consist from it have a head surrounded by neck that is called anatomical neck and it have two bony projections then one that is lateral that is called the greater tuberosity this is the greater tuberosity and one that is anterior that is called lesser tuberosity in between the two tubercles we have a groove called intertubercular groove intertubercular groove so this is the proximal end of the humerus consists of from the head anatomical neck greater tuberosity lesser tuberosity and there is intertubercular groove in between the two tubercles now we will study the muscle that is connecting the upper limb to the thoracic wall and we will study the muscles that are connecting the upper limb to the بجدار الصدر من هذه الصورة قاعد يعني نشوف انه قسم من هذه العضلات اللي هي مثلا هذه العضلة هذه الثانية قاعد تربط لنا جدار الصدر بالاطراف العليا من هذه العضلات this is this one is called the pectoralis major if we dissect this if we remove this muscle we will find another smaller one that is called pectoralis minor 
another muscle that is called serratus anterior serratus anterior and another small muscle that is called subclavius that it means below the clavicle small muscle called subclavius all these muscles will connect the thoracic wall to the bones of the upper limb to the bones of the upper limb these are this one is this is the pectoralis major muscle which is a fan shape fan shape muscle extending in between from the clavicle sternum and the costal cartilage and it's inserted into the humerus if we dissect it we will find these two smaller muscles that's called pectoralis minor and another small one that's called subclavius subclavius extending from the thoracic wall to the upper limb this is the pectoralis major as we said it is a fan shape and it have two heads we can divide it into two heads one that is called the sternal head and another one that is called the clavicular head clavicular head uh, it takes origin يعني, about every muscle يعني, اللي شي لازم نعرفه عن كل عضلة first of all its origin from where its begin from where its attached and its insertion where it pass and it is inserted يعني بداية العضلة اللي هو origin راح يكون هو mostly يعني راح يكون mostly fixed ال insertion اللي هو يكون mostly movable the nerve supply and the action of this muscle regarding pectoralis major it takes origin from the clavicle from the sternum bone and from the costal cartilage and it is inserted into the lateral lip of the bicipital groove this is the bicipital groove and this is the lateral lip of the bicipital groove it is supplied by medial and lateral pectoral nerves its action it will adduct it will adduct the arm rotate it medially medial rotation medial rotation and the clavicular fibers also it can flex the arm clavicular fibers also can flex the arm If we remove the pectoralis major, we'll find another small muscle that is called pectoralis minor. It originates from the third, fourth, and fifth ribs. It is inserted into the coracoid process of the scapula. The nerve supply is from the medial pectoral nerve. Its action, this is the this is the origin, which is the fixed part, and this is the insertion into the coracoid process, and when the muscle contract it will depress the point of shoulder it will depress the point of shoulder and if the scapula is fixed and it will elevate the ribs it will elevate the ribs subclavius subclavius from its name it means below the clavicle subclavius muscle takes origin from the first costal cartilage it is inserted to the inner surface of the clavicle and it have nerve supply that is special for it that is called nerve to subclavius which is a branch from the upper trunk of the brachial plexus its action it will depress the clavicle and the steadies this morning راح تثبتنا هذا العظم during movements of the shoulder gather خلال حركة حزام الكتف serratus anterior serratus anterior serratus it means in Arabic معناها العضلة المنشارية شوف من شكلها شكلها مثل مثل أسنان المنشار so it is called serratus anterior because it has it has serrated origin to have serrated origin this is the origin it takes the origin from the upper eight ribs origin fixed attachment fixed 
it is inserted into the scapula medial border and the lower inferior angle or nerve supply by a branch that is called the long thoracic nerve long thoracic nerve what is the action of this muscle when it contracts it will draw or pull the scapula forward in a movement called protraction يعني movement of the scapula forward حركة لوح الكتف إلى الأمام around the thoracic wall also another action it rotate the scapula يعني تساعدنا بدوران دوران لوح الكتف يعني شوف من هذا الرسم this is the origin of the serratus anterior from the upper eight ribs and it is inserted backward into the medial border of the scapula and its inferior angle and it will assist in the forward movement of the scapula and also in its rotation another group of muscle of the shoulder region is that muscle that is connecting the upper limb to the vertebral column muscle connecting the upper limb to the vertebral column from this muscle we can see that extend from the vertebral column to the upper limb this one that is called trapezius trapezius latissimus dorsi latissimus dorsi levator scapulae rhomboid minor rhomboid major first we will take the trapezius muscle from its name this muscle is called trapezius because it resembles the trapezium we can see that consists we can divide it into three main parts the upper fiber the middle fiber and the lower fiber upper fiber middle fiber and the lower fiber it takes extensive origin we can see that its origin begins from the skull and down on the vertebral column from the skull from the occipital bone takes origin from the external what we call the external occipital protuberance from the occipital bone down from the ligamentum nuque from the ligamentum nuque and then from the spine spinous processes of the seventh cervical vertebra and spinous processes of all thoracic vertebra all thoracic vertebra spinous process of all thoracic vertebra so it have a long origin it is inserted the upper fiber is inserted into the lateral third to the lateral third of the clavicle middle fiber will be inserted into the acromion and the lower fiber will be inserted into the spine of the scapula what is the nerve supply of this muscle is through the 11th cranial nerve يعني العصب القحفي رقم 11 ليش قسمنا العضل الى upper fiber و middle fiber و lower fiber لانه راح ينعكس على action of this muscle راح يكون ان ال upper fiber the upper fiber will elevate will elevate the scapula while the middle fiber will pull the scapula medially will pull the scapula medially while the lower fiber will pull the medial border of the scapula downward pull the medial border of the scapula downward these are the nerve supply of the trapezius muscle as we said before this, this is from the cranial nerve 11th cranial nerve the well, motor part spinal part of accessory nerve this 11th cranial nerve called accessory nerve which is a cranial nerve and this is motor to the muscle and we need sensory supply to this muscle as through c3 and c4 nerve another muscle that connect the vertebral column to the upper limb is what we call latissimus dorsi latissimus dorsi latissimus dorsi it means the broad muscle, latissimus, it means broad. Dorsi, it comes from the dorsum, which is the back. 
So it is the broad muscle of the back. معناها العضلة العريضة الظهرية. It takes origin from the iliac crest. This is the iliac crest. From the lumbar fascia. From the spinous processes of the lower six thoracic vertebra. And from the inferior angle of the scapula. And from the lower three ribs. So it have an extensive origin. Have the, or we can say it have a large origin. It is inserted into the floor of the bicipital groove of the humerus. This is the humerus. This is the bicipital groove of the humerus. It is inserted here. It's supplied by nerve that is called thoracodorsal nerve. Thoracodorsal nerve and its action. It will extend. It will extend the shoulder. Extend and adduct. The arm and medially rotate the arm. So it, it, it will extend, adduct, and medially rotate the arm. Another muscle that's called levator scapulae from its name, levator. It will elevate the scapula, levator scapulae. It originates from the medial border or the vertebral border of the Scapula above the spine. This is the spine of the scapula. Above the spine. This is the insertion. This is the insertion into the medial border. It takes origin. The fixed, yani fixed attachment of this muscle. It takes origin from the first, second, third, and fourth. Yani from these transverse processes of the upper four cervical vertebrae. This is the origin. Another site of attachment to this, the insertion, is the medial border, medial border of the scapula above the spine. It is supplied by a nerve that is called dorsal scapular nerve, and it, its action when it contracts, when it contracts, it will raise the medial border of the scapula. It will raise the medial border of the scapula. Another muscle that connects the vertebral column to the upper limb it is called rhomboid minor. This is called rhomboid because its shape is similar to rhombus. Similar to rhombus. It takes origin from the ligamentum nuchae from the spinous processes of C7 and T1. This is the origin. And it is inserted into the medial border of the scapula at the root of the spine. Nerve supply is the same nerve supply that, like that of the levator scapulae is the dorsal scapular nerve. Its action, when this muscle will contract, it will raise the medial border of the scapula upward and medially. Upward and medially. Rhomboid major. Rhomboid major, it takes origin from the spinal processes of T2 to T5. It is inserted into the medial border of the scapula below the spine. The nerve supplies the same nerve as the dorsal scapular nerve, branch from brachial plexus. Its action definitely when this muscle, when, when it contracts, it will raise the medial border of the scapula upward and medially. Upward and medially. Here we have another group of muscle that connecting the scapula, connect the scapula to the humerus. And if we remove this group of muscle, we will find another group that is connecting the scapula, this is the scapula, to the humerus. These muscles are the deltoid, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres major, teres minor, and subscapularis. First of all, we will take the deltoid muscle. Deltoid muscle. This is the deltoid muscle. Because it is delta shaped, so it is called deltoid muscle. 
can be divided into three parts. This is the anterior fiber, lateral fiber, and posterior fiber. We divide it because the function of each group of this fiber will be different. Takes origin, this is the origin of the deltoid from the lateral one third of the clavicle, from the acromion, and from the spine of the scapula. So from three parts, and then we die in the clavicle, or in the acromion, or in the spine of the scapula, and descend down to be inserted into the deltoid tubercle at the middle of the shaft of the humerus laterally. What is the nerve supply of deltoid? It's through axillary nerve. And its action, okay, it will abduct, it will abduct the arm, abduct the arm. Anterior fiber, anterior fiber, it will flex and medially rotate the arm. Well, posterior fiber, posterior fiber will, will extend and laterally rotate the arm. Another group of muscle that's called, يعني, this is the same that is called the rotator cuff muscle. Rotator cuff muscle, the is the rotator cuff muscle. Uh, it is called rotator because it performs a rotatory movement, يعني, rotation movement around the shoulder joint. And cuff because it covers the shoulder joint, it protects the shoulder joint, so it is called rotator cuff muscle another muscle that is called subscapularis subscapularis takes origin from the subscapular fossa of the scapula this is the origin and it is inserted into the lesser tubercle of the humerus nerve supply it have what we call upper and lower subscapular nerves and the action it will medially rotate, medially rotate the arm and at the same time it will stabilize the shoulder joint, stabilizes the shoulder joint. Another muscle of the rotator cuff muscle, rotator cuff muscle that give a strength or support or stabilization to the shoulder joint, supraspinatus. Why it is called supraspinatus? Because it originates from the supraspinous fossa that lies above the spine of the scapula. Supraspinatus. This is the origin from the supraspinous force. And it is inserted into the greater tuberosity. Greater tuberosity of the humerus. Nerve supply by nerve that is called suprascapular nerve. And the action, it will abduct. It will abduct the arm and it will stabilize the shoulder joint. Infraspinatus takes origin from the infraspinous fossa, insertion into the greater tuberosity. Nerve supply is the suprascapular nerve, and the action, action here it will be lateral, laterally rotate the arm, and also it stabilizes the shoulder joint. Teres minor, teres minor, it originates from, this is the lateral border of the scapula, from the upper two-third of the lateral border of the scapula. It is inserted on the posterior aspect of the greater tuberosity, supplied by the axillary nerve, and its action it will laterally rotate, laterally rotate the arm, and also it shared in the stabilization of the shoulder joint. بما أنه هاي هاي مجموعة العضلات اللي هي rotator cuff muscle تحيط بالshoulder joint so it will stabilizes this joint. Teres minor, teres minor takes origin. This is the lateral border of the scapula from the lower one third of the lateral border of the lateral border of the scapula, and it is go go anteriorly to be inserted into the medial lip. Medial lip of the bicipital groove. Nerve supply is from the lower subscapular nerve. Lower subscapular nerve. Lection 
it will immediately rotate and adduct the arm and it's shared in the adduction of the arm medial rotation and adduction of the arm and it stabilizes shoulder joint كل هاي مجموعة العضلات ان شاء الله راح نشوفها بالتفاصيل بالمختبر مختبر التشريح and thank you